Welcome to Statics. Unit Vectors A vector is a unit vector if the magnitude is equal to 1. Let's look at some examples of unit vectors. Here's a two-dimensional vector with a magnitude of 1 and oriented at an angle theta from the positive x-axis. Because it has a magnitude of 1, it is a unit vector. I can represent this vector in Cartesian notation as shown. The x component is equal to 1 times the cosine of theta and its y component is equal to 1 times the sine of theta. We use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude based on the components as shown. We know that it must be equal to 1. The square of the cosine of theta and the square of the sine of theta can be rewritten in this common notation. Squaring these two terms gives us this simple form. Perhaps you recognize this as a common trigonometric identity that you once memorized. Here's a dynamic figure of a two-dimensional unit vector that you have access to through the course materials. Note that as I change the direction of the unit vector, its magnitude is always equal to 1, shown as the radius of the bounding circle in the figure. Here is another example, but with a three-dimensional unit vector. Here is the vector in Cartesian notation. Here it is in a graphical representation, with x, y, and z components indicated. Calculating the magnitude of the vector using the Pythagorean theorem confirms that it is a unit vector, since the magnitude is equal to 1. A unit vector can be useful for representing other vectors. Since a unit vector has a magnitude of 1, it is simple to scale by multiplying it by a scalar. For example, suppose I have a unit vector, ua, as shown. Again, I use the Pythagorean theorem to confirm that it is a unit vector. If I multiply it by the scalar a equals 120 newtons, I get vector a, which acts in the same direction as the unit vector. Notice how the math is performed. I multiply each of the components by the scalar magnitude. The resulting vector has been scaled up 120 times the original unit vector. These operations can also be performed in reverse. We can take a vector and find a unit vector that acts in the same direction as the original vector. Rewriting this equation shows us how to get the unit vector from a vector. We divide the original vector by its magnitude. For example, suppose I have the vector shown. I want to find a unit vector acting in the same direction. First, I find the vector's magnitude. Then, I divide each term of the vector by its magnitude. Now I have the unit vector. The original vector can be represented as its magnitude times the unit vector as shown. In summary, a unit vector is a vector with a magnitude of 1. Because of that, it is easily scaled by multiplying by a scalar. The unit vector can be used to show the direction of a vector and is found by dividing a vector by its magnitude. As you will find out, unit vectors will come in very handy when determining angles and directions.